Stanford University. Good morning. Today we're looking at the earth element. The uh, order that I've chosen, by the way, is the control cycle. So we started with fire and then water controls fire. And now we're doing earth and earth controls water or it can help to balance water. So this is just one other aspect of the elemental um, framework and in, that can um, be quite nourishing and quite supportive to, to the body and to uh, our mental and emotional states as well. So earth element is um, about balancing opposing forces among many other things. But for today's session, I wanted to focus on this idea as I think many of us in our, in our own bodies balance different uh, sort of uh, changing um, uh, states, but then in our, our broader life, we can also look at the roles and responsibilities we have and, you know, balancing the work and the family or um, uh, community or, um, you know, time for self or time for uh, friends. These can be different forces that sometimes feel as though they might compete a little bit for our, our time and our attention. And earth energy is really very much about holding center and allowing all of these various uh, forces at work to um, mutually support each other. And then from our, our centered earth energy, we can then also support our different um, responsibilities and meet them with a sense of ease. When earth is in balance, there's a lot of ease. Uh, earth turns on its axis steadily <laughs> you know, every day and then around the sun, luckily it's so steady, we don't feel it. So it's, um, it's a really good analogy and, and uh, teaching that we can also look at in our Qigong practice. So please come up to stand. And as always, or if you're here for the first time, maybe you are welcome, as we have done in the last few days, to also do these practices in a chair, which I just have available. You can also do them standing, which I'll uh, mainly demonstrate. It's really nice to have people's cameras on who are able to turn them on, but I also understand it being very early in the morning, so you might not want to be seen, but it is nice to be able to see uh, others, and sometimes I give little cues as to how um, the, the, the forms and practices can, um, can be um, uh, supported or, or, or done. So if you're standing, please stand with the feet about shoulders distanced wide, turn straight, hands resting one over the other onto the lower abdomen or dantian. If you're seated, you can do the same thing, just sitting with the hands on the same place. For those who've been working since uh, Friday with me. One of the first um, things that we can feel in Qigong is an invitation to sink the chi, to immerse our awareness in and down. When we sink the chi and immerse it, it's down first to the lower belly, energetically, and then physically down into the feet and legs. In Chinese, this is called xia chen. And what this offers in helping a balance of oppositional force is that so often we inhabit the head and thinking mind to the disadvantage and neglect sometimes of the rest of the the body from the neck down. So we let the balance of awareness and attention uh, stream through the whole body downwards, as well as 
holding space for the conscious thinking mind upwards. And then taking a few breaths to help that sense of steadying, becoming centered, earth quality. Let yourself relax the way that in Chinese, Sung suggests like a pine tree and long flowing hair. And earth, when it's in balance, is able to hold center and help us navigate these different roles and responsibilities in our greater lives or within our own uh, physical experience. When out of balance, we get a bit overwhelmed and it's, it's difficult to feel these roles and responsibilities as easeful, they become burdens, can lead to worry, overthinking, uh, over analyzing things. So please release your arms and hands. And this first movement is to gather natural breath let the palms move out and gather the tendency to feel a bit burdened or worried or like there's too much responsibility happening right now that you can't feel easily managed. And then point your middle fingers towards each other, the palms toward the earth. And as hands float down in front of the face, neck, chest, downwards, gently clear the energy of overwhelm or overthinking, the weight of the world on your shoulders. Letting that gently go back to the earth itself, which can transform that. And then turn the palms out again and gather what feels like a steady center, something that can balance the various oppositional forces at work at any given time, physically, mentally, emotionally, in roles and responsibilities, and fill with this space of center. An ease and steadiness at the center. Good. And again, still natural breath, same movement, different intention. Gather what you just filled, your capacity and the opportunity for Earth's steadiness, centeredness, and ease that balances oppositional forces in our lives and seal this in, sealing in steadiness, a sense of being centered and able to balance the various forces at play happening in your life now. And let that naturally complete. You can shift around on your feet at any time if it feels nourishing, supportive. My own journey with Qigong, it took quite a long time of regularly standing for longer periods of time before I felt comfortable being still and rooted in my feet for any longer than 15 minutes. So. I can relate. <laughs> and then once you feel the feet steady again, we'll go through our meridian stimulation uh, movements and we'll move through them fairly steadily. This one first is five rounds or so of sliding the hands down the central channel of Rin Mai. And this can help support that sense of assurance and ease. Earth is also really benefited by the sense of okayness and trust. So 
Ballpark five rounds or so, Ren Ma, the main yin conception meridian. Then to the inner arms, we'll stroke down again about five times. I'm mirroring you, so your left arm getting a little massage down. These are the yin meridians of fire and metal. Noticing the sense of uh, touch, same with the other side, an intentionality to the touch to nourish. Quality of earth that helps it stay in balance is um, clear intention, E, clear focused mind. The mind that's not trying to digest too much that can digest and metabolize and uh, see things quite clearly. And then folding towards the arches of the feet, we'll slide the hands up the inner thighs towards the groins and then the chest. And we'll do that about five times. These are the yin meridians for water, uh, earth and wood, kidney, liver, spleen. And just an intentionality to nourish and support the flow of energy through these pathways. And then release. For the yang meridians, a light tap, top of the hand, arm, to the side of the neck and the shoulder. We'll do that three times. And then massaging lightly at the top, sense of uh, releasing the weight of the world on your shoulders. <laughs> this is what earth element can really help with. And then brush. And massaging out some of the weight of the world that sometimes can rest on the shoulders, the other side. You say all of these again, if you've done seated at any point, if it feels appropriate. And massage. And brush the arm. And little fists holding them lightly so you could hold something without breaking it, like an eggshell. And then the stomach meridian, the center outer thighs, the movement is down the, the thighs and then down the outer shins towards the ankles and feet. We'll do that three times. And the same with the outer legs. This is part of the gallbladder meridian, just turning so you can see the side of the leg. Especially for those in California time, this can be so nice to do in the morning. It's just a, a gentle wake up to the energy flowing through the meridians and the body. Let's see how that feels. And then for the legs, the hands on the lower back to start down the backs of the legs, you can slide and release along part of the urinary bladder meridian. This one pairs with water. I like to do it a few more times because it detoxifies and flushes out things that were already moving out of our system. And when you finish, noticing that, and we'll lightly use the, the tips of the fingers to tap the center of the uh, forehead up to the crown of the head. This is the yang meridian, do my the main governing vessel along the back of the head, center of the spine. 
You pick it up behind in the center of the spine, fingers down to the sacrum and the tailbone. That channel goes all the way from <laughs> where you start, but actually in the palate of the mouth, it ends. We're doing the reverse flow here down the spine to the starting point of this meridian, which is at the end of the tailbone. We'll do that one more time, total of three. And as you finish, take a moment noticing how that feels. And then we've done a few versions of, um, or a version rather, of what's called constant bear. I'm going to teach you a different version today. Um, it's a bit of this turning and twisting, but it starts with the feet. And I want to show you the feet. You pivot on the heels, move this chair just a bit. And if you're, if you're in a chair, you could still do this, pivoting when you sit. And then as you pivot towards one side, the other knee bends, if you're standing. And it's always better for me <laughs> to do things initially with the breath. So letting the breath stay fairly steady and with the out breath, I'm pivoting the in breath back to center. And then I'm going to tip a little with the out breath down. With the in breath, my arms will lift and with the out breath, I'll tip a little bit down. And if you're seated, you'd still do this inhaling up and exhaling down, inhaling up and exhaling down. How far you tip down is really uh, <laughs> not that important. <laughs> it's, it's more just feeling and sensing into this yield, this push, this lift, Side to side balance, left and right. But when we go down, it helps the momentum to go back up. This is oppositional force in the body. You yield down into the feet, which then can help the arms come up towards the sky a bit more lightly, effortlessly. Yesterday's session, we looked at you know, effortless rest, finding rest in every moment. This is a nice movement to help build a little bit of uh, mobility around the legs, the, the waist, the shoulders. Starts to improve a little bit of the circulation and flow through the blood. And then we'll finish one or two more rounds. If you started to your left, finish to the right. And then pause with the arms overhead, finding the balance of steadiness to the feet and legs lightness and lift through the upper body and arms. In fact, you can see my arms just a bit more. And from the sky, return the hands moving forward and down towards the earth as you let the form naturally complete. Observe maybe the rhythm of your pulse, your breath, heart rate. And we'll do a practice that suggests the round shape of the earth and the sense of balancing effort 
left and right, but also oppositional force. So this one, the arms do lift upward toward the sky. And I'm just gonna adjust my camera a slight bit so that you can see my arms better. I think that's gonna be better. Yeah, there we go. So the arms will start up here. The feet about shoulders distance. And you could also do this practice sitting in the chair. As you start this, the ball in the sky is the name of this practice. And tip just a little bit towards your left, I'll mirror you. And as you do that, feel how the hips shift over to the right. That's the oppositional balancing of force, physically in the body that needs to happen. Inhaling to center. And then the same thing as you exhale towards the right tipping. And just notice what happens on the left hip to counter weight and balance that. And then continue rising up as you breathe in and tipping over as you breathe out. At any point, if it becomes too strenuous on the arms, bend the elbows, make your ball closer towards the earth rather than high up in the sky. And then as soon as you get kind of a sense for uh, tipping rather than turning. So if I showed you from the side, you wouldn't want to be turning, but rather than that, you tilt a little bit. Once you get that feeling over to one side, you can also lift that same heel that you're tilting towards. And that will actually help create a little bit more room to tip over. Other heel opposite or the same heel you're tipping towards can rise. And the hands holding the ball in the sky. The ball can expand, it can contract. Do what feels like it gives a sense of your center, your belly an opportunity to navigate the weight of the arms and upper body going one way, the legs helping to counterbalance that effect as you go the other way with them. Moving at your own pace, ball in the sky. Sometimes you can pause in a certain place if that feels good. This particular form, because it's an, a strong emphasis on the side body, there's a, a spleen, which is the earth element, organ meridian spleen point that ends right underneath the armpit at the side chest. So I particularly like this for that little stimulation on the earth element, organ meridian pathway. And then the image of holding the ball in the sky, it's like the shape of earth. And to do this, you can also work at just noticing how your embodiment of oppositional force uh, unfolds. Let the head and neck go. Keep your effort to about 60 or 70%. Don't go beyond that. You want to keep that for reserve. And then after you tip towards your right, just come back up through towards your center and feel the physical center, your abdomen area. Can that feel balance between the earth below and the sky above? And similar to earlier, the palms will turn forward and now let the ball slowly descend from the sky down towards the earth as the arms release forward and down. The form naturally complete. Noticing how that feels. And gathering some of those qualities that you embody, this oppositional force, 
the connection to center that enables that oppositional force to feel manageable and present in your body. And fill with that as the hands move out, you gather, and then fill with this idea of balancing from the center the different oppositional forces at work. And rest the hands, no rush, just when you complete that, rest the hands onto the lower abdomen, take a full breath. Just move the camera back down just a tad. And we'll work with the five element practices for Earth, or form that we've done for Earth. This one too can be done seated. For this, the feet start, that so you can see my feet. <laughs> the feet start together, yeah. And it's a bit complicated, this one, so I'll, I'll talk you through it slowly. With this, one foot will step out, so your left foot will step out. At the same time, both the hands lift towards the sky, breathe in. Now your top hand stays towards the sky. The front bottom hand turns toward the earth. And then like the earth turns, you turn around towards your left on near you. Take an in-breath there. And then the top hand lowers to touch the earth with the out-breath. The other arm, your right arm, stays out. Inhaling, stand with both arms, lifting out to the sides. And then right, uh, left foot, sorry, steps back as the arms release down. Right foot steps out and the same thing repeats to the second side, you inhale. You can lift the opposite heel. And then exhale, top palm turns, bottom palm, palm to the earth, top palm to the sky as you rotate around. Take a breath in. And then exhale, top hand lowers down, touches the earth, opens as both arms lift out, stand up. And then exhale, the feet back together. Now, when you step out and you lift up, feel the opposite heel lift, but the ball of the foot resting on the ground. So that's your right one. And can you feel the oppositional force of reaching down through that opposite heel or uh, toe and up through the two arms? So there's kind of a movement down from your center to the leg, up through your center to your arms. Then draw this back through center, but the arms represent this oppositional force. Top palm to the sky, bottom palm to the earth, like you're carrying a platter with the top arm. Inhale, you can lift that opposite heel now as you turn. And then exhale, lower the heel, lower the top arm, touch the earth. And then from your center, reach both arms out, both legs down, all from your center. As you exhale, the foot comes back in as the arms release down. So there's a lot of opportunity here to embody the sense of oppositional force. From your center, reach down to the leg. From your center, reach up through the two arms. Top palm up to the sky, bottom palm, palm to the earth as you come around, breathe out. Breathe in, lift the opposite heel, but reach down into that foot. And then exhale, that top arm floats down, touching the earth as a gesture of appreciation. Then rise as you breathe in, both arms up. Stepping the feet together, release. Left foot steps out, both hands lift up, reaching down gently through the opposite leg. Exhale around, top palm sky, bottom palm earth. Lift the opposite heel, your left heel as you turn, breathe in. And then exhale, you don't have to uh, keep the legs straight. You can bend the knees as much as feels good. Touch the earth, in breath, rise out with both arms. 
Exhale, foot back in, arms down. To the right, inhale, lifting, opposite heel. Exhale, and then turn, bottom palm to the earth, top palm to the sky. Inhale. Then lower the top hand, touch the ground, exhale. Both arms out as you stand up. Inhale. Exhale, lovely. <laughs> foot back in, arms down. Yeah, inhale, left foot steps out, lifting, but feeling from your center, how your center navigates these oppositional forces. Turn around, inhaling here, exhaling, touch the earth as you fall down, brush the earth, arms open, in breath, stand up, out breath, left foot back to the center. Inhale, stepping out and lifting. Exhale, rotating around and turning. Nice. Inhale, feel the oppositional force down to the leg, up through the hand. Exhale, lower the top arm down. Inhale, both arms out like a parasol shape, an umbrella. Exhale, foot back in. Inhale, lifting. Exhale, turning. And then feeling both down into the earth, up towards the sky, and then lowering down the top arm. Both arms out, breathing in like a parasol shape. Lovely, standing, exhale, foot back together. And last time, inhale, lifting up. Exhale, one palm down, down, one palm up. Again, that balance of energy, yin and yang. In breath, out breath, lower touch towards the earth, open the arms, breathing in, stand tall, breathing out, feet together, arms release. Step the feet apart and gather this feeling of navigating life, <laughs> experience, movement from the center. Gathering this with the hands as they move out, this opportunity to embody your center, to feel connection from center. And when we feel that, you can feel with this the things on the periphery that orbit our lives we feel a bit more supported, engaged, connected. It's a beautiful thing to feel in your own body. And something very valuable that I found informs how I meet the different forces at work in my life. And then rest your hands on the abdomen, the dantian, taking a full breath. So another beautiful um, form from the earth element is um, the snake. And this form, we're just going to do uh, one or two versions of it. Um, but the snake is also considered not a bad thing in China. Uh, Chinese culture sees the snake as a, a, a tiny dragon, a small dragon. So it, it has the same um, fortunate, lucky, kind of uh, uh, positive characteristics as dragons in Chinese culture that are about compassion. Um, the snake particularly, though, is about transformation. And you know, there's a very powerful thing in being able to meet all of the different roles and responsibilities and not feel overwhelmed. When we become agents of very powerful transformations within ourselves and within our communities, when we have that ability. So we can call on the snake to aid with some of that. And this first one, the fingers interlaced, the hands lift, 
and turn towards the sky. The feet are together. Step back so you can see the feet. And be gentle here. But as you exhale, turn from your waist towards one direction. You can mirror me if you'd like towards your left. And inhale back to center. This is called snake starts to break out of its egg. <laughs> Number one, exhale to the right. And we'll repeat that a couple times, back to center, breath in. And then turning, breath out. Back to center, in breath. And then turning out breath. You could do this one seated as well, just interlacing the hands and turning from the waist. One more time back to center and turning each direction as you breathe out, turning. So it's almost as though the snake is just starting to feel the top edge of the shell and how it can break out of the shell. Exhale. And then come back into center. Slowly release your fingers and start to feel the inner lining of your egg that you're starting to want to break out from. And this is a very nice feeling of being centered inside of your egg. Noticing how that feels, taking a moment, resting. Then, Interlace the hands once more. Let the palms turn again towards the sky. Take an in-breath. I'll show you from the side. And if possible, just a slight bend in the knees, but more towards straighter than bent. And then you go forward as you exhale towards the front edge of your shell and down. Then you slide the hands facing, palms facing the front of the body and all the way back up towards the sky. That's one circle along the front edge of the shell as you exhale, go forward and down. Up the front, palms facing inwards and hovering up, breathe in. And breathe out. This one for me embodies a lot of oppositional force. The upper body's weight going forward, the legs work a bit stronger to support that as you come down, the back as well. Then inhale, come all the way up towards the sky, turning the palms upwards. And we're going to reverse that. So now bend your elbows, turn your palms to face the face, the chest, the belly down the front legs, exhale, and then move towards the front of your shell from the bottom up, the snake breaks out of its egg, part two. <laughs> All the way up and repeat that twice more, turn the palms inwards, hover them in front of the chest, the belly, the thighs, the shins, towards the ground. And then forward and up, feel that oppositional force down into the earth to rise up towards the sky. And then down the center once more. Pushing gently against the inner lining of your shell. You're nearly free. <laughs> and then again, feel for the outer edges of the shell as the arms release and come down. I was just showing you from the side for clarity of instruction, but you're welcome to face whichever like, way you like. And I think we'll do all three. I think we've got time. So the third, final breakthrough. Snake is gonna break out of its shell this time. You reach up. And this one's also very interesting for center, this being your center, your belly, towards your left. You circle to the outer edges of the shell, the, the sides of the shell, sorry, the inner edges, but the sides of your shell down towards the base and then around to the other side and up. Yeah, feeling for the sides of your shell, go two more times this direction. You feel the oppositional force, legs go down, feet go down to get you up. 
Breathing out and down. This really calls on a strong center, not just your abdominals, but your back muscles. When you get to the top, you're going to reverse and go the other way towards your right, mirroring you down, around. This could also be done seated, though. And over twice more, total of three circles each direction. This is a celestial animal for the earth element, the snake. And this time, as you come all the way around and up, pause. Release the fingers and now feel the palms open and you really feel forward like you're breaking free from the shell and like a little Jack in the box, you pop out of your shell as the snake comes out of its shell. The arms release. Down. And let that naturally complete. Feet step apart. Feeling the natural completion through the arms, the hands, the whole body and then gathering your transformative qualities of snake and its balance of force against the shell, this oppositional force from its center, from your center, fill with that. And to feel steady at center and strong from center physically, can also maybe you know, support and in, encourage the ways in which we can feel that as well through other aspects of our lives. And then rest the hands on the Dantian. Full breath. I'm gonna finish with a, a, an earth form. This one. It's very simple. One palm, your left palm, is at the chest, and the other right palm is below the center of the left palm at the pubic bone. So this is an earth mudra for steadiness, this image of balance, one hand towards the sky, one palm moving, moving down towards the earth. Sometimes it's also called power of the immeasurable gods. I'll show you closer up. The palms are open like this. One hand in front of the chest, a slight distance from the chest. The bottom elbow, a little straighter. That's it, nice. And for me, it's almost like half prayer. You catch a prayer, grace. And if anything drops off of it, the bowl of the bottom hand is there to catch it. And then we can switch by breathing in and <clears throat> drawing the hands apart. And the right palm then replaces where the left is and the two hands change position, left below, right above, mirroring you again. Just attune to this shape, your center, maybe what it feels like when grace is present or prayers are present. We often feel more in harmony or aligned or kinder and trusting. Faith, prayers, trust is a quality of earth. Rather than worrying about everything, we trust in the way things are. Slowly release the two hands, let them settle. And this will be the closing practice, the closing form for peaceful chi. Palms turn out and they lift to gather anything from this practice 
maybe the feeling of being uh, in tune with your center or oppositional force. Any benefits from this practice this morning that you can fill in your body as peaceful vitality and energy, peaceful chi. May this peaceful life energy support your health and well being and the health and well being of all life. And this is how I typically end my classes that I teach on my own. And I wasn't sure whether to include this for the summit, but I think I will. So a fist with your dominant hand, the other hand folds over this fist. And what this means is I put away any aggression. I, I come to you with kindness and wisdom. And we bow three times. The first bow is to each other. Wherever you are in the world today, across the Zoom connections and networks, we bow to each other for sharing this practice. Second bow is to your teachers, past, present, future. And the third final bow is to yourself. But when you bow to yourself, you bow to all who've given you life, your parents, your grandparents, your ancestors, all those who've come before you, maybe as far back as to the source that is one. So thank you all so much for joining today. Many of you a few days in a row now. I will be available for some time if anyone has questions or comments. So there are going to be so many different answers I think you could get from different people and um, a practical answer is uh, in China, Qigong has been, become wildly popular and especially in the 80s, then there was a bit of a crackdown because of its association with a, a religious um, group called the Falun Gong. And so no one dared say they practiced Qigong anymore. So everyone just started saying, oh, I don't practice Qigong, I practice Neigong. <laughs> it's exactly the same, <laughs> really. Um, it's a political move. It's a keep yourself safe move in China. And then you would also, there are also people that would say internal, you know, Qigong can also be practiced internally. Ne, internal just means from the Dantian, usually or from the internal organ system. But with Qigong, that's what we're doing as well. It's just, um, it's just vocabulary, but the practices are all the same. Yeah. Some would also say Nei Gong has an association with uh, Nei Jia Quan, which is what I practice, internal martial arts, and um, that one practices uh, with internal martial arts an emphasis equally on health and longevity, so the medicinal aspect, uh, meditation and spirituality, and martial application. So people who practice Nagel tend to also be doing more of the internal martial arts and they might have more of, a, of an emphasis on the um, application, uh, the health for the body for application, but also spirituality. And just to say, even if there's an emphasis on a seasonality and then it's associated element or, or a phase, um, which is good because whatever meridian and organ systems associate with the, the phase and the season, they tend to get more easily knocked out of balance during those times. So practicing things for 
the season you're in can be supportive. It's never wrong or never unhelpful to practice all elements all year round. So, but I'm glad to hear that. Thank you for sharing. Um, so I would always emphasize for Qigong uh, something that feels slower, um, more natural, and on the whole, chest breathing happens when we're a bit um, aerobic or when there's a bit more stress happening and we're moving faster. The, the, the secondary respiratory muscles live in the upper chest and they, they help us breathe faster to get more blood circulated quickly. So when we're relaxed and we're doing something that's not uh, required to go quickly, then the primary abdominal muscles would be best used, which is uh, abdominal breathing and very relaxed breathing in the way that um, you breathe in deep sleep or in the way babies breathe. Oh, there's so many translations. The one that I sort of default to does use pronouns. And part of the problem with translation is trying to figure out how to create a subjective voice like I or they or he or she. Um, and um, Stephen Mitchell is the one that I, I tend to default to, but a lot of people um, criticize his translations. I, I personally find them really beautiful and less pedantic. Um, but I would say my more recent appreciation for translations isn't a full text of the Tao Te Ching that I know of, but um, a scholar I really like, Livia Cohen. She's a Taoist scholar. She's written a book um, as part of the uh, study guide for the Tao Te Ching. And I have to write her. I've actually been in contact with her before about something else, but her translations of the because she, she basically explains the context of the Tao and um, a, a really, I think, thorough um, presentation of some of the history and interpretations and understandings. But her translations of the chapters, excellent. Um, she speaks Chinese. She is a practicing uh, Qigong Tai Chi Taoist uh, practitioner. She knows her stuff, um, and I need to. I just need to ask her if she has actually written an actual translation of the Tao Te Ching, or if because I, I looked in the um, I, I looked in, in the references, but there was no reference to who did the translations that she used. So I'm assuming they're hers. Yeah, she she also um, just if I'm on the subject of books, she's written so many books. I've read most of them. There's one, um, it's very academic. So if you like that kind of thing, uh, I'd recommend it. It's called Women of, of Taoism. And it will, it has inspired me that there is a world religion and practice that has made a pretty equal space for women historically in, in, um, in practice. And it, 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 it's, yeah, it's really well presented as well. So. Um, yeah, I'm very encouraged by that book. <laughs> and if I may, I also would invite you to read Mimi's work. She has written lovely books on, on Qigong. Oh, thank you, Tia. Yeah. And yeah. Um, why do you start with the left leg and you yoga, it's usually the right. Um, well, according to Livia Cohen's book about women of Taoism or women of Taoism, um, women and men tend to start rituals. Women usually start to the right and men to the left because the right is yin and the left is yang. Um, but I learned maybe because I learned from a male teacher that actually, no, I learned this from a female teacher. She said she always started to the left 
And I just carry that forward. In fact, one of the things I loved about the Women of Taoism book was describing the way in which uh, one becomes um, a priest or a priestess. They, they actually have a gender non-specific term for becoming a priest or priestess. There's no, yeah, there, there's a new term, right? So it doesn't distinguish between male and female. But um, she describes elaborately how a man becomes a priest by going to the community and getting benefactors and donations and then going through this very elaborate process where there's all kinds of things that they need to recite and perform and do and da -da 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 -da, like a whole long paragraph and a half or two. And then she concludes, and she's actually co-wrote it with Catherine Despoo. She concludes, she says, and for women, it is exactly the same, except for they wear a different hat and start to a different side. <laughs> you know, but in Catholicism, you know how, how it is. In Buddhism, even, like, there's so much that you have to get approval from, from a man if you're a woman to advance in any kind of religious uh, course. So I thought it was very, very cleverly done. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Thank you all so much. I'm, I'm actually going to have to hop off soon for a phone call, but really nice to practice together and I look forward to uh, tomorrow and Wednesday. <laughs>